What's up, everybody? This is Joseph R. Wheeler, the third, the artist, the founder, and the president of the Honest Kind Foundation. And I'm joined by my co-host with the co-most. You ought to know by now. I shouldn't even have to wave the flag, but I do it anyway because it's mandatory around these parts. Okay? Okay? Yes. Mr. Rise Up is for show. You can call me the third ATL and if you want to have some slang on it, some 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 lingo and whatnot. Oh, let me go ahead and make this real clear from the get, because I know y'all looking at the gear and wondering, oh, really, really? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And you know why, right? Because we coming. <laughs> to talk. Because <laughs> we coming. It's going to be a different reach. I'm coming. We coming. <laughs> and we with them. You understand? Love it. We with them. Mm-hmm. We with them. And if anybody want to know what that is, yeah, yeah, that was a custom that one of our vendors once upon a time. Uh, it's funny, man. I, it, so many broken moments in, in the history, and, and and of course, loving forever moments of some of the people who've been with Honest Con. But I had a brother, man, who used to do these shirts like this. Can you imagine? He gave me this like just as a gift. He, he it does it's beautiful. It. Yeah, he, he had done it as a gift, and then did a trade out with me, and then he did the ghost. The business goes. You know, when you're dealing with ladies, that's one left. But when you're dealing with business, you're like, man, what the what part of the world are you from where you go yeah, from business? Like it's I mean, it's 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 always disappointing. You right, know, whether it's whether it's business or personal. To, to it's this, just yeah. To, man, to this day I always wonder, like, man, did somebody die in the family? What's going you know, you never know. But it's never always know. but I like to use those metaphors because we're gonna talk a little bit about Dion as we always do. And I always say, when you've lived some of these disappointments with dealing with folk, where you gave your all and then they ghost or they trip or they flip or they do all kinds of stuff, hey, when you move on, yep. it is what it's supposed to be. That's right. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> Let them know. I'm coming. Now, if anybody say, well, why didn't you buy a JSU hat? Let me tell you something. I went looking for one, too. Yeah, and I wanted the J because it would have been like a double mm-hmm. win. I would have had mm-hmm. Joseph and Jackson State, mm-hmm. but just that the solid J, mm-hmm. man. First of all, you can hardly find them. Yeah. Second of all, I could not find a, a skull cap, man. You know, mm-hmm. if anybody don't know, that's what we say in Atlanta, old school. Really, yep. like we say skull cap, but y'all say beanies. Beanie, okay. yeah. You know, beanie, this a skull cap, shouting. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, I wanted just the J. I was like, couldn't find it. Hit fanatics, hitfanatics.com. Yeah. They got a great selection of everything. I'm a people. I'm a people. And the other thing is, you know, looking for price sometimes. But, you know, it is what it is with that. But we're going to talk one day. Oh, eBay, too. eBay, yes, for sure. We're going we're gonna to talk one day. We said it before, y'all. We're going to give y'all an episode. Where we talk mascots and logos. Can't wait. And why. Yeah, we got to do that because I got a lot to say about that, even when it, you know, refers to some of these schools that I want to support, HBCUs and otherwise, who I may like your team and stuff, but I just can't get with your gear. Like, you know, Jack, Jack man, another thing Jackson got from Dion. Some swag. <laughs> I mean, come on. He, he was clear about that. Man, his deal with with our Under Armour mm-hmm. took them to a whole another level. Straight it up, did. period. Mm-hmm. So we're gonna flip it on y'all this week. We're gonna go ahead and get into Week 16 and talk NFL and get rise ups picks from the get go. So get your ears ready, get your numbers ready. You can bet on it. The man is number one in multiple fantasy leagues for a reason because it ain't just fantasy; it's reality. Okay. Yes. We're talking Falcons and Ravens today. Birds. Birds. He say birds. Now, why Why in particular? I got to ask on this one. We're going we gonna to keep going fast, but I got to ask on that one. D- double on Tadra. You, you could you could decipher which birds. He <laughs> 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 winning either way. I try to hedge that one. I like that. Okay. <laughs> he didn't say. We just said birds. I'm going to go with that myself. Okay. <laughs> I love it. Lions and Panthers. Lions. Okay. Seahawks and Chiefs. Okay, see, baby. Chiefs. Okay, okay. Saints and Browns. Garbage. <laughs> it had to be one. <laughs> it had to be one, y'all. There it is. And listen. It's garbage. Go ahead. Go ahead. In keeping with that, <laughs> Browns. <laughs> Ooh. On top of that. And I can see that too. Texans and Titans. Titans. Bengals and Patriots. 
Bengals. He said the Bengals. All right. Giants and Vikings. Hmm. Vikings. I'm with that too. Bills and Bears. The Bills. The, oh. <laughs> he got y'all. <laughs> the Commanders and 49ers. Niners, baby. All right. Eagles and Cowboys. Cowboys. Wow. I'm going with the Eagles regardless. Raiders and, C- and Steelers. Mm. Mm. Raiders. <laughs> upset. Okay. okay, upset. I- I'll rock with that too. Packers and Dolphins. 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 Yes, me too. Got to have it. Got to have, have it. Broncos and Rams. Garbage. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to root the Rams just because of my connection to L.A. They can keep that one. <laughs> Buccaneers and Cardinals. Bucks. There it is. Chargers and Colts. That's on Monday. Mm. Oh, man. L.A. Chargers going to grab that one. Chargers going to do it. Well, there it is, y'all. There's your picks. Now, let's go back and retract real quick. What's your favorite mm. game and why? And who's winning why? Well, the 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 game I would emphasize this week and why I think the Cowboys are going to win. Mm. Number one, they're a good football team at home, but two, Jalen Hurts is, is Jalen is hurt. His, he took a hit last week and um, has a sprain. What is it? The AC joint, whatever in his shoulder. So he's going to miss at least this week and could miss multiple games. So given now, who's that his, who's his replacement and how good are they? Gardner Minshew, he's all right. He's a serviceable backup quarterback. He had a little spark a couple of years ago with Jacksonville, but hadn't really seen the field since. So given all that and mm-hmm. the fact that they're at home and have a lights out defense, Dallas. Damn. Mm-hmm. I didn't realize it was at home. That does have an advantage, doesn't it? Yeah, and let me hit on uh-huh. another one. I said the Raiders are an upset. Yeah. It's it's kinda I mean, they have the same record, both six and eight, and they're on the road. But okay. this is a it, it's funny, this is an auspicious occasion and a bittersweet one because Franco Harris passed this week. Mm. Um, it's, it's the 50 year anniversary of the Immaculate Reception, which is probably the most famous play in NFL history. And Franco was being inducted. He was having his number retired. Matter of fact, um, today. I, mean, I know who you're talking about. I saw a post about it because I didn't know anything about it. But I, uh, um, Jamie Foxx had posted about it. Mm-hmm. He was talking, you know, he's a diehard Dallas fan, but he was giving props mm-hmm. to this legend yeah. on Pittsburgh because, mm-hmm. yeah. Got you, got you. That's yeah, so it was it was unfortunate timing, but uh, yeah. Rest in rest in peace, Franco. My my, Respect. you know, all my, all my family's from Pittsburgh. My dad was a huge Steelers fan and Franco fan. Um, hey. So anyway, but I I yeah. think Kenny Pickett, which is their rookie quarterback, to start him is concussed. So I believe they're gonna have to roll with a backup, and mm. I, I just see the Raiders picking up on a little bit of momentum they had from their surprise win over the Patriots. So I, again, I'm gonna roll with the Raiders. But for nostal- nostalgia's sake, it would be great to see the Steelers win. Absolute, there it is. All right, now while we on this, before we move forward out of the NFL, I wanted to mention something I sent you earlier about. Because my dad sent it to me, and I was like, "This is this is crazy. I didn't know this, man." Mm. But uh, the source, anybody who wants to know, is VisualCapitalist.com. But they've ranked the most valuable teams in 2022 of the NFL, mm. and this list is incredible. I mean, it, it doesn't surprise me, but some of the some of the teams did surprise me, mm. and I was impressed because it proves the thing I'm always talking about: the game behind the game. And to me, that's what's more important at the end of the day. Depending on what you know, what you what you find interesting, I'll just put mm-hmm. it like that. I'm not gonna put that over. You know, if you're a fan, you're a fan. I, I get it. I was that guy once upon a time. Nothing but just a fan. But after I stopped being, you know, a diehard fan and looking at the business of it, I said, you know what, man. For example, okay, so Dallas. I'm gonna give you these numbers, people, so y'all can understand what I'm saying. Dallas Cowboys. Now you gotta understand these numbers don't mean they're winnings. This is talking about the value of a team. If someone wanted to purchase that team. This is talking about all this paraphernalia we rock in. This is talking about the fandom, the tickets bought out for the whole season, the maintenance of a stadium, the city's connection to that team and its arenas. And I mean, just everything, everything, what it's worth. 
Dallas Cowboys, the Colt, <laughs> is worth eight billion and is number one. So you talk about fandom. I'm just gonna say this before I keep on going with the list. You talk about fandom and what I know about fans of Dallas. It's like that alone explains itself. It's like they could be the worst team in the league and you're still the most valuable. This mm-hmm. is the understanding I want more people to have, not just in football, but in life. What is the value of your brand? What I say the power re- of marketing. What do you represent? What do people think of or honor when they see your brand? And that's why it's so important when, I mean, I, I laugh at people who, you know, take it as fluff when an artist, a diehard, true living artist like myself, born to do that says how important your image and your graphics and your logo and your mascot are these are iconography this is ancient sourced iconography this stuff goes all the way back to the beginning of humanity this is how we make our imprint on earth and say we're here at any time in history this is how you say i'm here and we come <laughs> so, so and what it can mean to other people I, I don't, I never went, I didn't go to Colorado. This is a bookstore cap. You know what I'm saying? This is from the bookstore I found. You know what I mean? But I'm proud of what Dion is doing to the point I went and got this. If Dion wasn't there and wasn't doing what he's doing and said everything he said about why he's doing it, I probably wouldn't have bought this cap. I still like the logo. I still got respect for Colorado, but with them having a, you know, super le- losing season, less on my radar, and it wasn't necessarily my favorite graphic. But it sure as hell went cooler when Dion got there. <laughs> so it's, it it's psychological. It's very important to understand the power of this stuff, man. Dallas Cowboys, number one, eight billion. New England Patriots, six point four billion. Good gosh, I got <laughs> Los Angeles Rams, six point twenty billion. Now you know that's built off of not the what they are now, but that was St. Louis. That was what were they before St. Louis? They were um They were LA. They were LA. That's so right. They LA. Back in the yep. day, went out. Well, yeah, when we were growing up, they were LA. Then they back to LA. So you're talking about generations of fandom. Mm. Uh, New York Giants, six billion. Oh, I'm sorry, LA Rams. If I didn't say it was six point two, Giants six billion. That's number four, by the way. Number five, Chicago Bears, winning or losing, five point eight billion. That's you in the top five, whether you winning or losing. Mm-hmm. Washington Commanders, you know, used to be the Redskins and all that fandom, regardless of the messed up mascot. Glad they made that change. 5.6 billion. New York Jets, 5.4. San Francisco 49ers, 5.2. I don't have to say billion no more. You know I'm saying nothing but B's here. <laughs> Las Vegas Raiders, 5.1 billion. Philadelphia Eagles, 4.9 billion. And Houston Texans, a team that ain't even been around since when? I mean, you're talking about less, less than less than 25 years, right? Do you hear me? 4.7 billion. Yeah. Well, I mean, you could set your watch to how to determine these rankings because the, mm. the this all tracks back to the the local market, right? The actual metropolitan area. So just just take the team out and just look at where we're talking about: Dallas, mm-hmm. Texas, mm-hmm. Boston, mm-hmm. L.A., New York, sure. Chicago, That's D.C. Right. New That's York right. again, yep. Bay Area, Silicon Valley, right? Yeah, Vegas, nice. Philly, Houston, massive metropolitan area. So, again, what you can derive locally from tickets and sponsorship, but mm-hmm. the TV market, mm-hmm. that's what, what drives these valuations. Because how many of these 11 teams mm-hmm. are actually any good? Oh, and let me not let me not, not say what we got to say, all right? Our very own Falcons are four point, worth $4 billion. Yeah. $4 billion. Still in, the, still in the ranks. Yeah, 16. So you're right at about the halfway mark. And again, that's about where I think Atlanta would be in yeah. give or take in the grand scheme of, of, of these major, you know, metropolis areas. So, yes, it's like you say, it goes back to the power of cities and what infrastructure for financial gain and money and prosperity is going on in those towns, which is why it's such a big deal when people say, oh, this team is coming to this town or when what we knew when the olympics hit in 96 what it would do to atlanta good and bad you know what i mean Mm -hmm. we we you know we damn sure dealing with the bad but we know we know from living it what this means on the paper you know on the paper and in life (laughs) so and and i'll tell you number one on the list of cowboys if you look at from when jerry jones bought the team in the late 80s to he's obviously still the owner what it's worth now Mm -hmm. i mean the the multiple is like 50x because i want to say he bought the team for like 160 
150 million, which at the time was actually, it might have even been yeah. less than that, but you're talking about 1.6, excuse me, 160 million versus mm -hmm. 8 billion. So again, to 50x your mm -hmm. investment, that's that's epic by, by any measure. Come on, man. Come on.